Mortal Kombat Legends Battle of the Realms ran one hour, 20 minutes, and came out in 2021. I hope this is a direct sequel to Scorpion's Revenge, since that movie was the perfect representation of all of the Mortal Kombat characters. They outdid Scorpion's Revenge WB logo before the uh, show even starts with a an opening with the WB logo where God level Shaggy with Scooby behind him takes out Scorpion. Such fun stuff. And I hope that that means that we will get a continued level of both care with the characters and fun enjoyment just like with the what I assume to be prior film. I mean, I know that it was released prior, but I, what I assume to be the movie that came before this in storytelling purposes. When the movie begins, Tarkatans are on Earth attacking... Scratch that. Tarkatans are on Earth killing a family. Raiden saves the child. Way to go, Raiden. The art style appears to be the exact same, but the time feels off, and this... Feels weird to be a follow-up to Scorpion's Revenge. Never mind. The mother calls the, the child Liu Kang. This is in the past. That's why the time feels off. But it is following the same story from the prior film. When we return to the present, Outworld is on the march invading Earthrealm. Not just Tarkatans, but other monsters are seemingly henchmen of Shao Kahn also. Kung Lao shows up in this and that dude is super cool love his hat man these outworld monsters look so cool and them attacking the babyface temple is just hardcore and really enjoyable jackson striker come in out of nowhere for the save jacks new metal arms are so much well they're so much better than that 90s lack of confidence Jax, I prefer these ones because A, they're necessary, and B, they they aren't like shooting laser beams like the Defenders of the Realms. These these arms are are uh, heavy art artillery. The people behind the making of both Scorpion's Revenge and Battle of the Realms know how to treat these characters outside of a video game, and by that I mean treat them well. I'm surprised. Kitana is on the villainous side of things. Johnny Cage is in Outworld and is negotiating a surrender. Cage is such a fun dude. The Outworlders misunderstood, thinking Johnny is here to give up on behalf, behalf of Earth slash the humans. Johnny says, I only pledge allegiance to the red, white, and blue. Sonya then pops in and shoots a bunch of Tarkatans, Nomads, Baraka-type characters. That is when Liu Kang and Raiden join the fight. It's uh, nice. Liu Kang is still trying to get the princess, Katana, to join the hero side of things. Shao Kahn enters the fray, and this movie has already surpassed Mortal Kombat Annihilation in every way. Shao Kahn and Raiden agree to go to the Elder Gods and petition for a final Mortal Kombat. Raiden believes it is better to end this now instead of putting it off to a future generation. The movie then checks in on the title character from the prior movie, that being Scorpion. He is stuck in this nightmare scenario, reliv reliving the death of his family. In this checkup with Scorpion, we find out that he and the MacGuffin he was trying to get in the prior film have basically merged and are for now forever linked. So that, that hunt for the, the MacGuffin, the key that could do the blah 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 for the villains are now one and the same smoke and the brother of sub-zero are training this is a this is very much the story of luke perry from defenders of the realm because this brother doesn't want to take up the mantle of the former sub-zero the one that died in the prior film Except in Defenders of the Realm, it was Liu Kang who killed the original Sub-Zero, and this one Scorpion did. But the, the principle remains the same. So, also like Defenders of the Realm, the Grand Master of the Lin Kuei has decided to merge man and machine, and 
Cyrax and Sector pop in, trying to force Smoke and Sub Zero to become one with what he considers to be the future. It's well executed and very enjoyable. It's I just it feels like that the makers of this really had had that care for the '90s product and just decided to improve visually. Unfortunately, Smoke gets captured. And Sub Zero gets blown away from the fight, so he can't blame himself like he does in Defender of the Realm for, for running. And I mean, and Smoke tells him to run anyway, but there was a an explosion that kicks him out, and so it's not cowardice that makes it so that his friend gets captured and he doesn't. Raiden and Shao Kahn appealing to the Elder Gods is much better than them being absolutely pointless like they were in Annihilation. When they agreed to when they agreed to the proposal for this final Mortal Kombat tournament, winner takes all, Raiden makes another request of them that he be allowed to fight on behalf of Earthrealm. This is why Raiden loses his powers. Is it's because of his request to the, to these uh, superior elders, and not just some random question where they ask Raiden, "Is he willing to give up his powers?" Which I thought was stupid because there was nothing behind it. The creative team having a good answer to every bad decision from the past is just so refreshing. I'm such a fan of these movies, the Scorpion's Revenge and this Battle of the Realms. When Raiden returns to Earth and lets the heroes know that final Mortal Kombat tournament is at hand, Raiden and team head off without much delay to this much bigger and much bigger stakes tournament. They uh, And they have a, a bigger team of heroes, which is pretty nice. Raiden explains to Scorpion that Quan Chi lied to him about the MacGuffin hunt, which feels right for the sorcerer who deceives, deceived Hanzo about who killed his family. Why wouldn't he, why would he be honest about this whole, the intentions of what the purpose of the things were? And, uh, the purpose of freeing the key was to merge the realms and thus negating the idea of needing Mortal Kombat the tournament anyway. Raiden explains that Shinnok wants to destroy the realms and that Scorpion has for too long straddled the fence of light and dark and he must pick a side. Shang Tsung leads the heroes to Shao Kahn's fortress and says, None shall face harm outside of the tournament, but we heard that in the prior film, so I'm not sure we can trust Shang Tsung and anything that he says. The arena in this is so good looking. The first battle is Johnny Cage versus a, a bug looking lady called Devora. She is uh, she fights dirty and kicks Johnny below the belt. Devora is declared the winner, which I think is amusing as all heck because I mean yeah she she used dirty tactics, but hey. A win is a win, I guess. When Jax and Sonya check in on Johnny, he he does the very Johnny Cage thing of making jokes. Johnny is the best, and Joel McHale is is so well cast in this role. He then we then get multiple fights: Jade versus Liu Kang, Striker versus Atar Cotton. I'm going to uh, call him Baraka number two. Sonya versus Molina, Jax versus Katana. So many great fights. And they they do a really good job of highlighting the the high spots of all the fights. Jax is able to do his, the arm rip off gimmick to one of the outworlders much like how that Goro did to him, so he gets at least a, a mirror image of revenge here in this as to what happened to him. Whether it's your first time here or you're a regular here at Mr. Super Oz. I just want to thank you for tuning in to the channel. It exists because I, Oz, from the channel Mr. Super Oz, I wrote a 68-page graphic novel called Everlasting Survivors. Volume 1 is called All Day Long. If you follow the link in the description of this video, you can get yourself hats, shirts, posters, all kinds of fun things. But most importantly, you can get the story itself. And the more people that pick up the story, the greater the chances are that there can be continued adventures with these heroes. If you could, give it a like, 
Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Enjoy. Sector and Cyrax are on the hunt for Scorpion. Gotta get that MacGuffin. I assume Sub-Zero will come in for the save. Well, not exactly. Sub-Zero does pop in, and he does stop Sector and Cyrax, but he instantly goes for revenge on Scorpion for killing his brother. Hanzo, who understands the revenge game, suggests they put the beef to the side to stay alive against these machine menaces. Smoke attacks, and dang, the Lin Kuei takes Scorpion. Day two of the tournament, Raiden versus Rico. Liu Kang is taken aback when he sees Raiden bleed. Even though Raiden is not used to bleeding, he is able to win. Scorpion is used as the key to open the tomb. Sub-Zero for the save once again, but it appears it might have been too late. Sub-Zero is of two minds. He wants to kill Scorpion, but he also doesn't want the this hell on earth when when we see the tournament again Liu Kang is worried about Raiden who is off to sleep for the first time ever which was funny Johnny Cage tries to share with Sonya Blade but she is tough and wants none of his touchy-feely stuff back to the Scorpion Sub-Zero drama we get a tag team match Sector and Sub uh, Cyrax versus Sub-Zero and a Scorpion the enemy of my enemy such type thing is my friend type gimmick. Big fan of Hanzo finally being a true hero. I pop when Sub-Zero tells Scorpion, I'll never forgive you, and then Scorpion replies, neither will I. It's really smart writing because, you know, Scorpion is now officially the clear-cut babyface and isn't going to forgive himself for what he did, especially given that his brother didn't even, wasn't in control of his actions and was being manipulated by Quan Chi. The Robo Ninjas get the MacGuffin to do what they want, I think anyway, but the film goes back to the tournament. Sonya gets revenge on Devora for treating Johnny badly earlier. Shao Kahn beats Jax and Shang Tsung takes on Stryker. In the fight, Shang changes himself into Stryker to fight Stryker. Shang then possesses Stryker and kills him from the inside out. It's really harsh. But also, the the team behind this know how to treat these characters. And, and I swear, this is just the best they've been outside of the game. Return to Robo Ninja fighting with the, the bad boys on the road to redemption. The constant cutting back and forth is getting hard to keep up with. Kung Lao versus Shao Kahn. Ah, hate seeing Kung Lao get ripped in half. But you gotta make Shao Kahn look strong. Shao Kahn tells Katana to have no mercy when she takes on Raiden. I'm sure this is because Katana quit her fight with Liu Kang in the prior film. Well, Katana sure shows no mercy, but the mercy she doesn't show isn't towards Raiden, but rather Shao Kahn himself when she throws her sword fan thing into him and declares Adenia will be free from the Emperor Shao Kahn. Bad news for the hero... Katana, she didn't kill the Emperor, and she only made him matter. The whole thing is moving at an insane pace. Now, that's not necessarily a bad thing. This movie is now... It's, it's, it's how Annihilation should have gone. Shang Tsung versus Liu Kang. Shang breaks Liu's arm, but then Liu breaks one of Sh Shang Tsung's legs... Instead of killing him, Liu says that he wants Shang to live with the knowledge that he lost, and it wasn't even close. This is how you show the Chosen One is the true hero, for sure. The Robo Ninjas, I know, that isn't their actual names, but I just like calling them that. The Lin Kuei is what I mean. They deliver the MacGuffin to Shinnok, and... He has demons attack them, so the sellouts, the Grandmaster, Smoke, Cyrax, Sector, none of them get anything from abandoning tradition. They also have nothing to show for it. Mortal Kombat is great at these characters that have shades of gray. Not just good versus bad, but also variations of the in-betweeners. So many bad people that seem less bad by comparison 
from being around worse people and or creatures. Shao, uh, Shao Kahn versus Raiden is beautifully done, but also mercilessly executed. Before Shao Kahn kills Raiden, Raiden tells Liu Kang that his parents loved him. Liu versus Shao Kahn. Liu is super motivated to win, but I assume this is all basically for nothing since Shinnok has raised this uh, realm-destroying real big bad. Mario wins! <laughs> uh, because he frees the princess and Liu Kang defeats the emperor. Katana is, is free from Outworld's rule. Only now, the Elder Gods show up and inform Liu Kang that he has been chosen to be the vessel for them to defeat this true threat. Which is, you know, it looks good and it's well done. Scorpion and Sub-Zero are fighting for the side of the heroes, but they seem to be losing to the forces of Shinnok and, you know, Nether Realm. With all of the, the realms merging and the final Mortal Kombat feels, it feels almost like it was pointless or unnecessary, but, you know, I guess if the heroes didn't know, then they didn't know. Liu Kang, now one with the Elder Gods, flashes back to when Raiden chose him. Liu was chosen because he lost so much and blamed none. This was a great 5 out of 5 star finish and just an overall great film. I'm glad that it was able to stay high quality. Sonya arms up all the boys with weapons for this mission that is simply to protect civilians while Liu defeats the, the world-ending monster. Throughout these animated movies, I often wonder if this fantastical story stuff could work live action. And then I recall, you know, how, how dare I think that. I've watched the Avengers, the MCU, Endgame, all this stuff. Of course, if they did these things with humans, it would be really done, uh, well done. But, I'm, you know, I'm a fan of animated movies, so this thing, it was great, and I look forward to seeing how they did for Mortal Kombat Legends Snowblind, which came out in 2022. And, uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed the review. Come back for the rest of the week. Later.